Yeah, hey, good morning. Uh, it's good to see all of you. And exciting time of the year again here. So um, just want to open up. I do have a kind of a bunch of different comments to kind of hit on, give a summary of kind of what's all been going on and kind of where our thoughts are going into the spring. Um, you know, shoot, it's, only, it's already been a month since, uh, since signing day and two months since, a little over two months now since uh, the bowl game. So um, time's been flying by and, you know, we just finished a six-week phase of training. So we had a, about 45 minutes ago, we just finished kind of a banquet we call winter banquet for our uh, program and, and celebrating all the successes, whether it be individually or what we call our Husky Strong competition and uh, those awards that go along with that. And so had a fun, uh, Coach Mack does an awesome job making it a lot of fun and, uh, you know, summarizing all the accomplishments. But I think just to highlight a few things, um, again, I think it was a phenomenal just winter training period. Um, thought the guys responded incredibly well uh, with a short amount of time in between playing the Alamo Bowl game and then all of a sudden turning around a few weeks later and uh, hitting the ground running with training. Um, you know, I think overall our culture took another step, another leap forward. Um, just, you know, a year ago, when you think about, I mean, we're trying to learn guys' names. We're trying to figure out who's who. Um, just a lot of that kind of kind of figuring each other out. And, uh, you know, now we're, we're on a trust level with our guys, and they're on a trust level with each other where, um, you know, it's, it's a holding each other to a high level of accountability and really pushing guys to, to – you know, do things that are maybe even uncomfortable sometimes for them, uh, you know, especially when it comes to those workouts. But um, I think they, what you see is they believe in the process that we have. Um, you know, we've seen improved leadership, uh, which should be expected with so many upperclassmen returning. Um, you know, we do things where we put the guys out in front of the team. Our goal is to have a player-led team. You know, we give them the foundation, the guidance, and kind of nudge them and push them along because there's many hours where they're not with us. And so the player-led piece is important and whenever we put them in front of the team individually at different times maybe it's a message or we do a thing called shout outs and it's been so sincere it's been well thought out the messages I mean guys are asking to, to go forward and, and give a message and even sometimes um, maybe there's been a hiccup and, and a guy's getting you know somewhere getting treatment or coming and someone else steps in and just uh, covers for maybe a minute and a half or two minutes until the other gentleman or, pl or player comes. I mean, it's, it's been really cool seeing the, the growth of our team and it's, it all comes down to the investment and, uh, you know, they see this as a great opportunity and uh, they believe in what we're doing. So um, they've been, they've, they've embraced the, the, the hard work and they're having a lot of fun on the journey. I guess that's the best way to put it. I just see so many guys that are just like pouring everything. They can flip the switch when that whistle blows, whether it's 6 a.m., 7 a.m., doesn't matter what time, you know, and they're already on that line in the indoor, you know, uh, in the Dempsey, um, 7 a.m., you know, Tuesdays, Thursdays was this week. And when that whistle blows, you know, they're ready to go. They're clapping it up and ready for that workout, you know, with excitement. So uh, overall, I think just to summarize the mindset piece, I think of what we've done is the things that were hard before are now, I don't want to say easy, but we've kind of redefined what hard is. And now what, 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 yeah, well now is easy. You know, guys are taking care. Of. You can see it, especially with the new players that come in, where it's a lot to handle. Whether it's their schedules, whether it's the workout in particular, and um, now there's new things that we're pushing them to, to where you know those are hard. And so it's really cool seeing these guys um, just kind of raise the bar on what you know the definition of hard is in our program. So. Um, you know, we'll continue to work out, and I mean, the the body piece and just building our building our armor is such a key, you know, part of football. We'll continue to lift three times a week, even when we're uh, in spring ball. Um, our typical week, and I, I feel strong about this, is to go, you know, three days a week. So in our case, most times it's Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, with practices, meetings, and then on a Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday morning, you know, we can go with um, with some meetings to cover the practice before, and we can do 
a lift um, and uh, you know continue to just keep getting stronger here during this phase but uh, some some highlights as far as real raw data um, there's still a lot being compiled um, just as we finish and they're finishing out some testing on a few things and especially in the body composition area but uh, every player on average uh, raised their in this is going from uh, last August to right now okay and uh, the last that was kind of the last test out was right before fall camp um, two and a half inches per player on the on the vertical uh, four inches per player on the broad jump um, three reps at 225 on the bench increase and uh, 20 pounds per player overall on their bench max and then uh, 45 player uh, pounds per player on the squat and you know those numbers aren't going to be the same jumps as we saw a year ago because those jumps were so drastic and you see the newcomers coming into the program having a lot of those jumps that uh, we saw a year ago when we came into the program so excited about that I think you can see DD to see significant changes in their bodies um, you know uh, just the, the you know the lean body mass continue to to go in the direction that we want it to go so um, you know kind of just giving you guys a heads up and, and the excitement I think you're well aware I mean we've got our roster additions we had the, the guys that came in and during the winter we have uh, three high school additions that will join us here for the spring quarter Caleb Presley Landon Hatchett Elinius Davis um, we we'll have our transfer Dylan Johnson and then we have a couple uh, um, guys who are walking on um, one quarterback with Alex Johnson and uh, a punter with um, um, Adam Saul and so those guys will be joining us here for the spring quarter they'll miss the first three practices which is maybe one of the negatives I guess if you had to pick a couple things uh, or pick one thing on uh, us having a few practices before spring break but um, they'll catch on um, you know and uh, you know get acclimated pretty quickly um, unfortunately we had one roster announcement just one thing with uh, in regards to injury um, Julius Irvin is going to graduate here this spring and just because of the, the injuries he's had um, he's going to medically retire and not use up the rest of his eligibility at this time so um, or just that's the plan moving forward so he's really vetted it out and I think um, you know Julius would be one of those I can't speak highly enough about what he's what he did uh, as far as his buy into the program and you know when we were going through it last year um, he's one of the guys that really sticks out in my mind uh, when we we're going through those injuries especially in the defensive backfield um, he went out there sometimes and and um, I mean he was cleared to go and but he was in you know he was hurting and playing some pain and you know there were injuries that were happening on the field he come out for a few plays and go back in and he just knew the team needed him and uh, you know I really have a lot of respect for that guy and everything he's done but but, um, you know he's gonna graduate and move on and and uh, hit the world you know uh, get it and get after things and um, kind of take that next step in in, in life and uh, you know we're we're pretty proud of him and gonna be and we know he's gonna he's gonna do great things so um, focus area for spring ball I think just from a team aspect and there's things offensively defensively special teams that we have as far as goals and and uh, kind of areas we want to focus on but um, just refining our skills um, um, just you know the guys understand kind of how we teach things and and you're always tweaking things just to, 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 to make it better especially for certain guys maybe you're a maybe you're a taller player and versus a shorter player and just how you teach some of the techniques and and the strengths and weaknesses that come with even just your different body types but um, more attention to detail with the schemes now that they're getting it installed again you know just those extra details and um, you know them hearing it again uh, that's that's what we're excited about building depth at all positions I think is critical you know just so we're not vulnerable anywhere um, we got some some slots we need to fill with starters um, you know, we lose three interior offensive linemen and and working guys into that th those positions and um, we're going to mix and match uh, some different combinations of guys and cross kind of train some some defensive backs and figure out what the best spot is for each of these guys and we have some good ideas I think that we'll we'll start with but uh, you know we'll continue to develop that and, and and uh, cross train some guys in positions um, to figure out what meets what is best for their strengths and what you know they can bring to the team, um, you know, in the best way possible, um, especially in the defensive backfield. 
Um, just I think our mindset, um, you take it for granted that when you have a season like we did and we finish out November and December with so much success and, and we had that swagger, we had that belief that was genuine and, um, you know, it doesn't just automatically carry over. Yes, there is a lot of belief and we have so many carryover guys that a lot of it is in place, but it's a new dynamic, you know, how are you going to replace Jackson Kirkland who gave some really, really strong, um, you know, talk and led by example and um, you know how are you going to replace Alex Cook you know some of those guys I mean I can go on and on about the senior class we had but those dynamics change a little bit new leaders are ready to step in we're excited about that and the leaders that we have you know continue to raise their role and so um, you know that 1-0 mindset was something I think we we just really bought into the guys whenever it came to an adverse situation um, they had a systematic way of being able to own and accept the situation we were in good or bad um, flush it and move on and play in the present and um, we just constantly you know I want to say screaming but we're constantly reminding them that uh, you know that's what it took and it's also not just when adversity strikes but it's also when you get to a, uh, a point where you know human nature sets in when things are good too and that's where we're at right now is like hey you know no matter how good things are you gotta understand the next play is the most important or the next rep or the next meeting or the next you know um, you know the, the the next game you know might be so um, and then just you know everything revolving around what comes some of the things I hit on player led you know the championship championship mindset and um growth that we have had the players um, one thing that they're really big on um, meeting with the uni council is uh, you know intermixing our position groups and really growing that bond even tighter um, they're they're friends but they're you know they're just really trying to um, you know be intentional and uh, becoming a tighter knit team um, and uh, you know offense you know kind of reload the offensive line kind of figure out those spots there's some situational improvement areas that we want to continue to just really focus on and know we're locked in on um, as far as what our philosophy would be um, you know defensively uh, being able to be confident enough to where we can play aggressive not ever you know have to be never feel like we, we're right on our heels I think from a special team standpoint it's um, it's you know we look at last year uh, there wasn't we were efficient um, but we need to be more explosive you know we didn't have really a lot of these glaring mistakes and you can look at the starting points of where we started games or started possessions um, there really wasn't a lot of times where we shot ourselves in the foot, but um, we need to be more explosive. So we're getting uh, guys in the right spots and, and uh, you know, looking forward to, to really becoming more explosive in that area. So um, that's hit on a lot of areas. I'm sure there's some questions you have in, in some of those those pieces. Um, before I open up for questions, I just want to say how how uh, awesome it is. I think that, uh, you know, Jen Cohen um, gets the opportunity to, uh, you know, be on the selection committee with the CFP. Um, I think she's going to do an amazing job. I know how hard she works and and uh, how involved she, she is and continues to want to be. Um, you know, she's she's per perfect for, you know, our game for uh, college athletics. And uh, she, you know, is a leader, not afraid to say um, and speak up. Um, and I uh, know she's, you know, just always on top of it and um, fired up for her. I'm fired up for what that means for, you know, the representation that we have from even within our program. So uh, it's really cool. and want to congratulate her on that. So. Kaylin, you mentioned something at the end of last year, and I'm paraphrasing about what led to the Arizona State and UCLA losses about just trying to avoid things like that. What were kind of the lessons that you think you took from those two games in particular? Yeah, I mean, at that time, we were really going through it. Um, there were some injuries that even built up from week one, week two, week three, week four. It just kind of nicks that I mean, guys were out, you know, and just the way it overlapped and the, the combinations we had to put on the field, in particular at defensive back, I would say, um, really put us in a bind. And, um, you know, I mean, we were actually, it got to the point where we knew, a guy like Julius Irvin, I think, in the UCLA game um, is the one that sticks out to me when it comes to his, him, but in other ways. I mean, we literally had pitch counts on guys. And so, you know, what's your plan B when you're in the middle of a game and you're trying to rotate guys in on specific third down packages and that guy goes down, you know, and, and, and now your plan that you worked on, um, as simple as you're trying to make it, um, it becomes even more complicated because there's, there's someone that you're pulling into a role that, um, 
you know, you, you, uh, or, or a path, you're going down a path that you really didn't want to. Um, I think, you know, in the end, um, you know, we kept fighting and battling in those games uh, in all areas, uh, both sides of the ball, special teams. And so, and we learned a lot about ourselves that we'll keep fighting and we'll keep playing. So there were some great growth moments that our guys took from it. But in the end, um, you know, the losses, um, you know, happened for different reasons. And, and I put it on that position. That's not what it was. It was other things too, right? We turned the ball over a few times and, and did some things where we were in tough spots against UCLA, um, especially in the first half. And, um, you know, um, had some conversion opportunities against uh, Arizona State, you know. And so it's learning from those things. And we were figuring out as a staff all the, the pieces, you know. I mean, do you, do you run man schemes, uh, gaps, you know, uh, zone schemes? I mean, in these situations. And, uh, you know, we learned and uh, we had a coaching staff that continued to adjust and evolve based on, you know, the experiences and the personnel that we continue to have. So it's just a uh, year two should always be um, a huge step. And uh, a lot of it's because we're, we're, uh, we've learned our, you know, learned, I don't want to say learned our lessons, but learned from the experiences we've been through, whether it be personnel related. Um, we're continuing to build our roster. I don't think we're probably done yet, especially when you have a guy like Juice uh, that's, you know, not going to be able to, to be with us. Um, you know, that opens up another slot that we'll uh, have to kind of dive into and figure out how to fill um, in the in the months ahead. I know he's, he's not here for spring, obviously, but what um, what did you, what did you learn about Austin Mack and, and getting to know him that made you believe he'd, he'd be ready to yeah. come in a year early, especially how, how young he is for his grade? Yeah, he's uh, he's young, but he's he's really mature. Um, and a lot of that has to do with him. But he's also in a program um, that, that just really grinds works, um, has high expectations, does a good job of developing their guys. And so I think he's much further along in the pro in the process uh, at his age compared to most most quarterbacks, most football players. Um, he has it internally. He also has the physical skill set and the size to, uh, you know, um, you know, to where he's he's. Um, you know, he's pretty, I guess you'd say explosive or just really, you know, far along in his, uh, in his development as a football player and as a quarterback. So, you know, we're going to be careful uh, with, with how we try to groom him. Um, but, you know, it's an awesome opportunity for him to come sit in the room with Ryan Grubb, Michael Penix, Dylan Morris, you know, and just really grow and, and learn um, and soak it all in. And uh, I think he saw that value being, um, you know, really important. And uh, it was a part of his decision that uh, you know I, I know he had to make um, when he was trying to figure out what to do because obviously another year of experience is something you try to balance but you know we'll do everything we can to try to get him some reps and and uh, you know he'll be right there then a year from now you know to to be in the in line to to, to continue to, to fight for a spot and then this this spring I mean, beyond Michael and, and Dylan what's kind of the plan for how you're going to divide reps obviously you've, you've got a junior college edition okay. yeah yeah and he'll be part of that he's got some college snaps under his belt and um you know we gotta we gotta find um you know a third guy i mean i, I think you know that's very critical you know figure out a, a third guy and some of it's just to take the reps off of the the mike and and uh and dylan um especially when it comes to the non-team reps or the seven on seven reps you know the one-on-one -on -one throws the routes on air you know you gotta have guys and then they'll get their opportunities you know there's um there's there's just spots where I know Grub, Coach Grubb will, you know, slide those guys in and, um, you know, we won't, you know, you got uh, Alex coming in who doesn't really know much about our offense and so, you know, it's not like he's going to get be the one that's out there all of a sudden taking a bunch of snaps, um, you know, running running reps with the team sessions but, um, you know, there'll come a time where, you know, he gets that chance when we feel he's ready so, um, you know, the guys we have in our program, uh, they know the offense, they're so invested, it's a, it's a really cool quarterback room when I look at the dynamics um, they just are really tight they're really supportive it starts with Mike and Dylan's relationship there's uh, there's just such a good cohesiveness you know I mean the way Mike respects what Dylan does as far as you know the hard work he puts in and just continue to push him and and Dylan just I think has a ton of respect for Mike on how hard he works and the the way he uh, handled last year and um, they're both humble guys they're both um, guys that have big goals and you know um, have a lot of talent. Yeah, which we haven't had a chance to talk to you since the Alamo Bowl, but um, when you have the kind of year you did, it opens up a lot of opportunities for your assistant coaches. You know, Ryan Grubb got a bump after the um, Alamo Bowl. He got words was 
was that he was talking to Texas A&M. He went down and interviewed at Alabama, uh, uh, according to reports. Can you kind of maybe walk us through what was going on behind the scenes and how concerned were you about losing Ryan Grubb? Oh, I think it's just overall, it's a general comment I'd make on him. Just, I mean, you know, we have a unique relationship because we go back so many years, you know. I mean, back, we were first working together in 2007 and we knew each other before that. So, um, I, you know, I think there comes a point where you just you just have full out trust in people and um, he knows what he has here. Um, I think it's unique and special. And, um, you know, as far as the potential we have as, at Washington, um, I mean, he is, um, he, he's going to invest invest and pour everything into it and the, the cool thing about you know coach Grubb and I think really our staff in general is as they're being sought after and as there's, as there's like career paths that they maybe envision themselves going down um, most importantly while they're while they're here and working they're work they're where their feet are at like they're working and pouring everything into our players and our program and making it better and not getting caught up like I think I see many coaches where you know it's like man my, where's my next move you know how do I become um, this this and how do I get this title uh, or at this level and you know um, they're so consumed with that our coaching staff and, and coach Grubb's a great example I mean he just continues to work where his feet are at and um, you know um, you know those are opportunities that are going to continue to come his way as we have success just like I mean a lot of our other staff you know um, when you go 11 and 2 um, it's it's uh, you know there's people looking at you um, and it's not just him it's it's other coaches as well and um, I think it's a tribute to uh, how much they enjoy our players how much they enjoy working together that um, you know, um, knock on wood right at this time that we're still um, got all 10 coaches and, and much of our you know off field staff still with us um, going into next year were you, were you, were you concerned at all Oh, I, I think you got to always figure out, like, right, what's what's the next plan of action? I mean, you know, you're trying to figure out what what you're going to do, and and um, you know, I mean. I think in general, the, all you can do is worry about what you can control. So you ask concerned, um, you're ready for for anything. But um, you know, all you do is can worry about what you can control, and that would be the action moving forward. <laughs> Fortunately, right? I'm on. Been me and Coach Grubb have been working for a lot of years uh, building the offense, and I'm pretty well versed in it. You know, so um, you know. Uh, but I also know how much he pours into it, and how it's really cool to see how our offensive staff has kind of taken off and made it their own, you know, as we've gone through last year, because it's different than it was at Fresno. It's different than it was, you know, at different places. And they've really formulated it around the players that we have and, um, you know, continue to take off. And I'm proud of the ownership they've ta they've they've put into it. What do you do in your career if you brought back all your coaches from one year to the next? Well, I think that's the whole thing with consistency. And, you know, this is my, only my third head coach spot. But when I was the head coach Sioux Falls, our entire – we're talking about three full-time coaches on that staff. So they moved to four when Grubb came on in 2007. So there was not a lot of, the, you know, the percentages were with us. But I will say this, you know, uh, I've realized through the years how important continuity is. Um, Southern Illinois, um, I think I lost one coach in four years. Um, uh, Eastern Michigan, our entire staff on offense was together for three years. Um, uh, at Fresno State, our, our staff was together both years I was there, both times and so um, I, I just part of I think of what my job is is to really facilitate that environment to where they just love being there you know them and their families and you know really bringing it together for the coaches and the team and the players to, um, to, to 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 believe in what we're doing and to realize it's special and um, you know a, a guy like coach Grubb he, uh, he he's all you know he's a hundred percent a part of that you know and he's a reason why we've had big, big reason why we've had success just like many of the other coaches so um, there will come a t point in time and you know when these guys get their opportunities and I'm going to be super proud of them and I'm going to be super happy for them because this is going to be something that helps them proceed in their career to be something that helps them and their families have a better life and so you know those times are going to come and um, you know because of the faith and the trust and everything they've poured into me it would be really um, it would be really you know not first class on my end and, and how I would do things to not wish them the best as well when those times come. What do you do to prepare as a coach, really as an individual, the course of a year, year to year, uh, 
with winning success, coaches become desirable, opportunities come. What do you do to prepare for that? I know that you got other things to worry about. But. Yeah, I mean, I think I've been prepared, preparing for it ever since I was uh, probably became a head coach at Sioux Falls. Um, you know, we got some members of that coaching staff that are here with us. Um, every stop along the way, Eric Schmidt at Southern Illinois and Coach McKeefrey at Eastern Michigan. Um, you know, uh, Fresno State, some coaches. I mean, every stop along Indiana with Sh Nick Sheridan and William Inge. Um, and then, you know, you're always taking note. And the, the cool thing, I guess, where my path, I think, leads to, you know, to where there's 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 some answers is um, when you're not a head coach, you have different conversations with other coordinators at other places, no matter the level, FBS, FCS, Division Two, you know, and so on. You, you're having those conversations conversations you're building relationships you're truly finding out um, you're truly finding out who the great coaches are who the ones that are genuine who the hard workers are um, you know who are the ones that can X and O because you're you're working against them sometimes you know your team is going against their team and so um, you know I, I had 10 years where I was an assistant coach after being a head coach and um, it wasn't like I had to be a head coach again I love being a coordinator I loved it um, but always thinking in my mind and making notes and I have a list that uh, pretty much you know is a, is a depth chart I guess so to speak of of guys that uh, you know you know are, are kind of ones you'd really look to um, if you ran into a, a staff situation where you had to fill a spot. With Julius Irvin like you said moving on uh, in that quarterback spot being really interesting there's a couple more guys coming in summer who are the guys that you're looking and saying okay I think it's their time and also you mentioned cross training who are the guys who you're thinking okay they can they're intrigued where I want to see them in multiple spots. Yeah. Um, you know, there's going to be some, you know, one, one guy that had just, I think, uh, really um, has, has evolved and come along here um, is um, Elijah Jackson. Um, I think he had a 40-inch vertical um, just from what I just saw. Um, I haven't seen the full printout and so I had a chance to study it, but from our awards, um, that stuck out to me, and I think just his growth um, and his maturity um, is something that really comes along. He's got the length. Um, he's got the athletic athleticism um, that's super exciting and so um, you know uh, we brought in uh, Jabbar Muhammad you know as a guy that's got some uh, experience and um, looks looks really good so far and we haven't even played football yet but um, you know those are a couple of guys along with the guys that we um, have been using and utilizing I mean you know I could keep going through all the guys that have played there this last year um, but um, one guy that will you know will move around a little bit will be Mish Powell um, trying some safety trying some nickel husky for us position uh, work and so you know just mixing and matching and, and Mish had a great off season here the last six weeks too so um, you know we'll, we'll keep uh, working guys in but those are some of the guys that maybe you haven't heard much about or they've been out there a little bit like in Elijah's case but uh, been really impressed we've been really impressed with him, him so far this last six weeks what did you split up uh, spring football and, and what was Irvin's injury what was the first question uh, why did you split up your oh, spring oh yeah and Irvin's injury was what yeah. Oh, well, he's got multiple injuries. I mean, he's he had multiple upper body injuries when you talk about the shoulders and and lower injuries. And so it's a combination of, of multiple things, just kind of the wear and tear of football on him. Um, splitting up spring ball. Um, really, it, it comes down to... Um, it comes down to more the back end of the schedule uh, for us. You know, when you look at April 22nd versus April 29th, which is what it would have been if we had waited till after spring break to come back. Um, you know, we get the opportunity to, to spend more time with our guys after spring ball is over, have some really good, you know, not exit meetings because they're not leaving, but just good summary meetings, uh, kind of wrapping things up, um, evaluations with them. And uh, you know, it's not a rush for our coaches to get on the road um, like it was last year. You know, last year, I mean, our guys are rushing on the road. We want to really do a good job of recruiting and being thorough in that. And, um, you know, we get a limited time frame to do that. A little bit in December, a little bit in January, and then uh, the April 15th to, 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 to end of May time frame. So um, I like, you know, got some philosophies with some things. And I like to get on the road a little bit, come back, reconvene, and then go back out and kind of finish it off and and this gives us a chance to do a good job with our roster 
do a good job with recruiting. Um, and then, you know, I think I felt confident that um, because of our maturity and as many guys returning, we were ready a little bit earlier to get on the football field. Um, we had a six week, six week training period, which Coach Mack felt great about. He felt good about a six week training period. The cool thing now is, and this was a part of the decision too, is we're going to have a five week block after spring ball. We can take a week off from the training and uh, kind of freshen up a little bit minds and our mind and body and we can hit a five week block then take a short little break for summer break and then have our summer session and so you know you hear me talking a lot about the physical just kind of um, you know you know the physicality piece you know and I think that's what it's going to take for us to take that next step and these blocks fit in well to just kind of the overall calendar um, again I think probably the only negative would be just that we have a couple guys that will miss the first three practices but we'll get them caught up to speed and again it was probably more about the back end than it was than it was anything so um, I honestly don't think it's a big deal um, either way um, I like being done I mean a lot of times I've been done even April 15th uh, I am a believer in what I explained earlier where I'd like to not have more than three practices if I don't have to each week I think it's good to go every other day spread it out as much as possible if a guy gets dinged up you know there's a chance that he's going to miss less practices as he recovers and rehabs um, if it's just something minor you know if you practice four times a week and you're out for a week that's four practices right now that's three for us with the setup we have you mentioned trying me at a couple different spots do, do you see dom as yep. more of a safety at this point or um, i think dom moves around a little bit but we are definitely going to work him in at some safety as well yep how do you assess losing the three guys in the offensive line have there any guys maybe that didn't play as much last season that stood out in winter training that can make them move this spring yeah i think um the guys were really counting on uh, early on and, there, and then of course the, the coach house done a great job recruiting and there's some younger guys too um, um, that we'll be looking at but you, you naturally go to Nate and Kalepo who played and started in a, uh, some games last year before Jackson came came back um, Mateo Mele um, played a, some snaps at center rotating with Corey Luciano and then you kind of got uh, Julius Bulo, Garen Hatchett um, and I really was impressed with those guys and Garen Garen's a guy that uh, you know it was just uh, the, when you we, we use what we call the starving board and starving kind of uh, type of type of uh, of way to explain like guys who really want it and he continually was a guy that uh, you know showed a starving mindset and really doing everything he could to be the best he can be and so excited to get him on the football field and get him out there. Kalen, um, you, your team is going to be on everyone's radar this year based on success. Compare that to last year when nobody really knew what to expect from you in your new system. Uh, how do you deal with those high expectations? Yeah, yeah, and and we've talked about that and a lot. We talked about it yesterday in a team meeting we had, um, and it's a fun situation, right? I mean, it's fun to have the attention and 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 that, but along with that comes, um, you know, not just the talk but the walk. And um, we got to realize that everyone's, you know, breaking down our film, you know, a little bit more than in the past. Uh, they were kind of probably waiting to see who we were, you know, especially if we were week four or five or further game on the schedule. Now they're they're actually looking at some things and trying to figure out okay you know what are we going to do when these guys come they might even be both devoting a day I don't want to you know get a big head about it but it might even be, be devoting a day during spring ball or fall camp you know to some of the things that we're doing and so um, I know that a lot of that's happening uh, just because I get a lot of questions a lot of phone calls a lot of text messages so um, you know on, on certain stuff we're doing especially if it's uh, uh, someone I know you know or our coaching staff knows so um, for our guys it's still about us you know it's still about just being focused and remember how we got there <laughs> we you know last year and everything we did we just you know there was urgency there was an intensity about it um the thing i'm just so proud of our guys is, is i think that urgency and intensity is even higher you know i really do they're not taking anything for granted they're enjoying the moment they enjoy the work um they realize that work is what the work is what got them there last year and um they're not shy they're not afraid to do it and the more guys that we can keep bringing into the program that love to work that love to be a part of it are humble hungry um you know that's only going to make it that much easier in the day-to-day -day, you know as far as what it looks like i mean our guys in an eight station circuit and then we do four more just because we do more than what most teams do 
in our eight station circuit a year ago, this is the best demonstration I can give. You know, you go three minutes on or whatever the number is, depending on the week in that circuit. You know, they're grinding, they're going hard, okay? And the expectation is that they run to that next circuit when the horn blows. And last year, a lot of times it was just survival mode. You know, their bodies weren't equipped with that endurance, that stamina, um, and they were just in survival mode. Now, there's not a survival mode piece. They are all running, and there's a piece, one, one physically and then two mentally, where it's like, this is how we do it. This is what we do. I challenge them to take that now to spring ball and not just be these workout warriors, but also be guys that, you know, this mindset translate to, you know, doing that on the football field and the urgency to go from drill to drill or um, the urgency to pursue, you know, until you absolutely the, the play is absolutely over you know we can go on and on this is something not something you, you have a say in per se but for the for nine months now people have been grumbling about realignment and conferences and all this stuff and i'm just curious how you feel about uw's positioning and if you can continue to reach where you want to nationally from within the pac-12 conference yeah i think we can um you know um i think for first of all just overall i think we have so many qualities in our program not to not to to be considered seated in any way but when you look at the academic side and just the tradition side and our support as a community that we get and the, um, you know the product pro, uh, production that we put on the football field um, you know where our program continues to go I think there's a lot of reasons why people would want us in their conference okay and so I always you know feel like you know we're gonna end up in, in a good spot okay no matter what this looks like I think relating back to the Pac-12 um, I think the whole thing of conference re realignment or conference realignment and some of the movement that happened here within the last year um, happened before the, the college football playoff went on to 12 teams and for us you know Know, one of our goals and I know there's other things that play into this but one of our goals right um, that we're gonna have is to win a national championship and our percentages go up you know as they expand to 12 teams and a chance to get into that playoff and you know we're in we're in a conference where you know um, you know that bid at number one spots gonna gonna get a chance for sure to, to get out there and when you get that opportunity I love being a part of playoff football um, I feel like that's a big part of kind of the mindset that uh, kind of develops developed who I am um, you know it's anybody's game and I love being a part of a winner go home you know type of situation so looking forward to that that kind of leads into the, the maybe the answering of your, your question there so do you get that question at all from recruits and parents of recruits about the future of the program and what conference you'll be in and how far they'll have to fly to see their kids play yeah no, I, a year ago not really at all because um, it kind of happened maybe towards the back end of the summer um, um, if people were just trying to figure it out, I think the per first part of my answer about, hey, we're going to be okay no matter what because of Washington and what the, the, the values are that we have. But I think this year there's a, been a couple more conversations as we get into the 24 class, maybe some questions because it's, it's just something that's out there more um, than people are talking about. So they have questions and I'm totally, I, I'm great with answering. It's nothing to shy away from, um, you know, it's, uh, it's something, you know, just want to reassure them that you know I feel we have a lot to offer do you get a feel for just in general kids and parents that you, that you and your coaches talk to during the, the course of the recruiting season how they view these things either positively or negatively is it a big issue with a lot of them or a non-issue with what's the feeling you get with the conference realignment yeah uh, how that's viewed by the players you're recruiting and their parents and so on is it a I think they just ask, asking questions and trying to figure out what we what we know, you know. And um, um, I think us building trust in the recruiting process with them is really being open and honest. I mean, that's all they can really ask of us, and that's really you know all, all we can do, you know. And so that message that you're hearing right now is a major part of the message that we're sharing with them. And and I think they they take that. I mean, they 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 trust that. And then you know, there's different ways, right? That that you can spin it to fit, you know, what what we want to do and and our goals here at UW. Coach, next week at practice, where should my eyes gravitate to if I want to see the most fierce competition battles for spots? Um, I think, you know, you're probably talking the offensive line, you know, we've, we've, we've been, you know, discussing. And um, I think just, uh, I think, you know, the defensive backfield, you know, um, 
just guys really getting in and taking advantage of those reps that they get at different spots and some of them might want a spot you know a husky spot or a safety spot or a corner more more than what they'd rather be in another spot but we got we got to figure out the right combination so that's where you might see the most just kind of like from week to week and spring ball kind of different guys put in different spots you know just to see what it looks like um, and to cross train those guys probably as much as anything so that we have that versatility to get the best players on the field next fall if something happens with some injuries um, you know I mean our receiving core competition wise is still elite you know I mean all the production from last year returns and um, then some you know Jeremy Bernard joins us and uh, Denzel Boston is a, another uh, year older and looking great in workouts so I mean that that position is competitive just from a standpoint of like man there's a there's a lot of depth to that 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 spot so um, you know um, the, the tight end position is a lot of the same guys Josh, Qu Josh Cuevas looks great in workouts um, we haven't seen him do anything football specific wise yet um, the, I mean I can go on and on the running back spot right I mean we got some new additions on top of uh, you know CD and and uh, crew there that return so um, a lot of competition uh, a lot of competition well a couple of guys that are coming off of uh, just kind of a note if you're wondering I mean there's a couple of guys that might be a little limited the first couple of practices kind of coming off some some surgery slash just rehab um, plans uh, you know even from from the season you know uh, where you know maybe the first couple of weeks in January they had a, a surgery in that plan or you know rehab plan is uh, still kind of um, still kind of there where they're a little bit limited but for the most part um, you know I don't expect Devon Banks to be contact much of the spring that would be one guy um, you know you'll probably keep asking me about him and he'd be a guy um, yeah, he'll be pretty much non-contact most of the spring, so just coming off an injury. What about Vince Nunley? Um, he'll he'll grow into he should grow into uh, throughout the spring um, some opportunity to you know again he'll be limited early. We'll continue to phase him in. Coach, what kind of growth have you seen from Zach Durfee? Obviously, it's a big transition from the mm -hmm. NAIA to D1 football, mm -hmm. but he seems like a super athletic dude on film. What have you guys noticed during winter workouts? So yeah, I mean he's a competitor and he's got he's already built. His, I mean, he's just broadening out, filling up his frame that we saw in him. Um, he's got some explosiveness, explosiveness, which showed up on film. And um, um, you know, the cool thing is, is just I think you know, you walk around and talk to the players uh, that you trust and that you know really kind of take a good scope and look at things. And you know, asking about the newcomers coming in, and Zach's one of those guys that stands out in their mind and how he's really fit in well, um, doing a good job, job just low key about his business and continue to. To, to get better every single day. All right. All right. Uh, thank you.